All right, in this video here, we're going to be solving compound inequalities, and these are going to be the AND style compound inequalities. So a scenario that goes along with these types of AND compound inequalities is right here. So let, let's pretend we're walking into a store. We got 50 bucks in our pocket, so that's the most that we can spend. And then we know that whatever we're going to buy, candy treats, whatever, um, it's going to be at least $20 that we're going to spend. So the question is, how much could you spend? Well, the answer is somewhere between $20 and $50, including the $20 and the $50. So we can write this as one of these AND style compound inequalities. So here we go. So we know that our minimum would be 20 and our maximum will be 50. And the number of dollars is going to be between the 20 and the 50. And 20 is going to be the least. So 20 is going to be less than or equal to the number of dollars. And it's or equal to because we could actually spend 20 bucks. And the number of dollars is going to be less than or equal to 50. So there's our least. There's our most. Our dollars are in between. Common mistake is getting these mixed up, which direction they're going. Um, so 20 is the smallest, less than, less than, and then the biggest goes there. So they, the alligators should always be eating only to the right on these and style compound inequalities. Now, as far as the, the graphing goes, so again, we like to have zero on our number line and we like to have any other important numbers. So we need the 20, we need the 50. So we can spend exactly $20, so that gets a closed circle, and we can spend exactly 50, so that gets a closed circle as well. And it's the or equal to's over here, so that's another tip for that. And then we can spend anywhere between the 20 and the 50. So we have the number of dollars is between 20 and 50. There's our number of dollars between the 20 and the 50, uh, including the 20 and the 50. So here we go. For this example here, we're gonna solve negative five is strictly less than w minus two is less than or equal to five, then we'll graph it. So a couple of different ways of doing this. So way number one is split it up. I'll show way number two on this example next. So, but way number one is you split it up. So you actually take this, like this part here, this negative five is less than w minus two, and you work that one. And then you do kind of the, the right hand portion of it here. This w minus two is less than or equal to five. So you do them both, you split them up, and you work each separate. And then at the end, you compile your results. So here we go. So on this one here, solving, we need to undo the minus 2 with a plus 2. So negative 5 plus 2 makes negative 3 is less than W. Now, generally speaking, we like seeing the variable first, then the inequality. So we're going to switch this one around so it's a little bit more like what we're used to seeing. So we got that one done. Now we got to do the other one. So we have W is greater than negative three. And so this one here, we need to also add two to both sides of the inequality. So five plus two is going to make seven. So we have W is greater than negative three and W is less than or equal to seven. So now for our number line, we need the zero because it helps with our reference point. And then for this part here, we need the negative three. So this part here, that's got the greater than so it's going to be an open circle because it's not equal to. And then numbers bigger than negative 3 are going to be shaded to the right. And then for our 7 part here, well, that's going to be or equal to. So that's going to be shaded in circle. And then less than 7, numbers that are smaller than 7 will be shaded to the left. So we're looking for where these number lines intersect, where it's one and the other. And that's going to be between the two. So it's this part here is not where they the number lines intersect, nor is it over here. It's only here where both the top one and the second one are overlapping. So we have the negative three, we have the seven open and then closed, and we're going to shade in between. So this is what your number line answer is going to look like here. Then the other way of solving it is just leaving it as is, no breaking it up. This one tends to be the more popular method of doing it. So here we go. So there's our in compound inequality, and then we're just going to solve it as is. We're not going to split it up. So at the bottom of our piece of paper there, it's going to look like this. So we want to go in the middle from w minus 2 to just plain old w. So we need to undo this minus 2 how with a plus 2, and in this case here to all three sides. So we break it up into three 
sections or sides there. I know it doesn't make English sense, but I like to think of it as sides. So here we go. We're going to add two to the middle, to the left side, and to the right side of this compound inequality. So negative 5 plus 2 makes negative 3. And then w minus 2 plus 2 is 0. w plus 0 is just w. And then 5 plus 2 is going to make 7. And then just making it look a little bit prettier there. Now, for the graph, we like to have 0 as our reference point and then any other important numbers. We got the negative 3 and the positive 7. So strictly less than there is going to get an open circle and then or equal to a shaded circle and then the W is in between. And we already looked at this graph on the last example as well. So here we go. Let's go ahead and uh, work this example here. Negative 4 is less than or equal to 3x plus 2 is strictly less than 5. So we're just going to leave it as is, and we're going to solve it the way it's written. So at the bottom of our work should look like this. So we're looking at the middle because that's where our x is. What's being done to x is being multiplied by 3 and added by 2. So we need to undo those two operations. So we'll start by undoing the plus 2 with a minus 2 to all three sides. So to that to the left side, to the middle, and to the right side. So here we go, negative four minus two, it's gonna make negative six. Three x plus two minus two, no more twos, just the three x. And then five minus two makes three. Next up, undo the three being multiplied with a divide by three. So here we go, to the middle, to the right, and to the left. And we have negative divided by positive is negative. Six divided by three is two, so negative two there. 3 divided by 3 makes 1. So there's our inequality there, our compound inequality solved out. It's going to be negative 2 is less than or equal to x is less than 1. So on our number line, we like to have 0 as a reference point, And then any other important numbers, we need a negative 2 and we need a positive 1. So this is an or equal to, which means negative 2 is a solution. So it's going to get a closed circle. And then 1 is strictly less than, well, x is strictly less than 1. So that means that that's going to get an open circle because 1 is not a solution. And then the x is in between. So that's where the, the greater than negative 2 and the less than positive 1 intersect is going to be in that region there. And then for this example, I am going to show two different ways of solving this one. Here goes the first one. So remember, we're just going to solve straight down. And so we want at the bottom there, we just want y by itself. So we need to undo a minus 7 and a divide by 2. Well, we can start by undoing this divide by 2 with a times by 2 to all three sides. So times 2, times 2, and times 2. So 2 times 1 fourth, that's 2 over 4 makes 1 half. And then here we have times 2 divided by 2 just makes 1 times y minus 7 is just y minus 7. And then 5 times 2 makes 10. Next up, we want to undo the minus 7 with a plus 7 to all three sides. Boom, boom, and boom. And so 7 plus a half just makes 7 and a half. y minus 7 plus 7 is y plus 0, just y. And then 10 plus 7 is going to make 17. So we can clean this up a little bit. Sometimes it is better to do improper fractions. They're easier to multiply, subtract, add, and divide by, do operations with. However, when we go to our number line, this one is more difficult to figure out where it lives on a number line versus this seven and a half here. So for our number line, we like to have zero just as a reference point and then any other important numbers. So in this case here, we have the seven and a half and we also have the 17. So now this is a strictly less than, so it's going to get an open circle because 7 and a half or 15 halves is not a solution. And then 17, same story with that. Not a solution, so open circle. And then the y is between, so we're looking for y's that are bigger than the 15 halves and y's that are smaller than the 17. Well, that's going to be the y's that are between. And then the other way of doing this one is by clearing the fractions or multiplying by least common denominator. This would make more sense to do it this way if this 5 also had a denominator like 8 or 16 or something. But since it doesn't, the other way that was just shown or this way be about the same as far as difficulty goes. So here we go. This is the way we want it to look. We want to have y in the middle all by itself. And we're going to clear the fraction or multiply by least common denominator. So least common denominator between 2 and 4 is 4. So we're going to multiply all three sides 
by 4. So times 4 there, times 4 in the middle, and times 4 on the right. So 4 basically divided by 4 just makes 1. And then here, when we go 4 divided by 2, that makes 2. That still needs to be multiplied to the y minus 7. So if you're thinking canceling, you can cancel this, and you're still left with a 2 there. So 2 times y is 2y, minus 2 times 7 is 14. And then for the right-hand side, we have 5 times 4, and that's going to make 20. So the nice thing about doing it this way is now we just have a two-step that we need to uh, solve. And so those are pretty straightforward there. Undo the minus 14 and then the times 2. So we'll add 14 to all three sides. 1 plus 14 is 15. 2y plus 0 basically, right? No more 14s there. It's just 2y. And then 20 plus 14, 34. Next up, divide everything by 2 to undo this times 2 there. So 15 divided by 2 doesn't go in evenly, so just leave it as 15 halves. 2 over 2 is 1 times y is just y. And then 34 divided by 2 makes 17. So when we end up with improper fractions at the end, many times it is easier to change it to a decimal or a mixed number, so that way we know where it lives on the number line. So here we're going to write an inequality to describe the set of values shown. So we're going backwards. So instead of having the inequality and then graphing it, we're going to start with a graph and then write the inequality. Well, we know that our smallest number is going to be a negative 2, and the biggest number is going to be a 5, and then our x's are going to be in the middle. So for this one here, it's going to be a strictly less than because negative 2 is not a solution. And for this one here, it's going to be an or equals 2. Now, common mistake on this is mixing up the direction of these inequalities here, either having them both, both point in or both point out. So this is the proper way of doing it. Please take a mental note. This is a common mistake. So the smallest is on the left, less than, less than, the biggest. So these should both be less thans. Okay, if you have a greater than and a less than or a less than and a greater than, it's wrong. It needs to be less than and less than because you're going from smallest to biggest. So common mistake there. So just remember on these that when we have these compound inequalities, the and style ones, we can break them up into two different chunks like this and like that. Um, or we can and then solve each separate or we can just solve it like this to where we end up with the, the W at the bottom isolated. So also note here this and is also a synonym with the the intersect symbol we'll get into that in the next video here but i just wanted to put a, put a plug in that for that right now